Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at an Azure Vault 20 I recently timed in a pug group. It's a smooth but not perfect run and since I know a lot of people have been struggling with AV, I thought it might be something we can learn from. I'm running this on Preservation Evoker, but most of it should be applicable to all healers. And if you're interested in my talents in this run or my UI, make sure you check out the description below. Alright, let's get into it. So right out of the gate, it's pretty common for tanks to do a double pull here with the first three lashers and then pull them into the hallway with three more lashers and the tree. The main thing we want to get here is the Mystic Vapors cast. If your group is doing a good job of interrupting that cast, this pull is going to be really simple for you. If not, uh, things can get hectic in a hurry. So as you can see here, our group does let uh, a couple of these go through, which is pretty manageable. If it starts to stack up really high, like beyond two, you're you're looking for a bad time. So uh, go into this pull prepared to pretty much blow everything. There's no imminent danger after this. So you're gonna just wanna do whatever you can to first of all, interrupt as many of uh, vapor cast as possible. And then secondly, be prepared to heal up any damage. It's pretty unusual that your group is gonna get every single one. Uh, I'd say this pull went about as, about as good as you could hope for. Unfortunately, we had a guy die in the purple ground, which you don't wanna stand in. But if you can kick the vapors casts or at least get like 80% of them, your group's gonna be in good shape moving through this part. So next pull here is going to be four more lashers after this tree dies. You just want to make sure that you're not doing anything that could possibly pull that. Well, if these mobs spawn, your key is basically over. They'll block the entire pathway. They're very difficult. Um, and that's pretty much going to be it and on a dungeon with a timer this tight. So make sure you don't touch that whelp. Otherwise, same thing applies here. We're going to try and get as many vapors as we can. You can see that we got one stack out here and it's actually requiring quite a bit of healing on my part. Um, so you can't really let more than one, maybe two of those go out. Anything beyond that, you're talking major cooldowns. It is okay to use major cooldowns through this first section though, because once you jump off the cliff here and land, this part's going to be pretty darn easy with these trees and these blobs. The, the trees are gonna do an erratic growth cast, which you do wanna try and kick just to kind of speed things up. But there's no real danger here. Just avoid the swirlies, of course, and kick the best you can. So you're free to use your cooldowns very liberally in the beginning of the dungeon. All right, so skipping ahead a little bit, these trees aren't really worth talking about. Let's get into the first boss, Laymore, which basically has two moments that you want to be prepared for as a healer. Here at the start, you're just avoiding the frontal and keeping the tank up. Uh, and as these trees go out, we're in a little bit going to get our first kind of healing event here. Um, I like to have Echoes out on the whole party when he does his knockback. And that's going to help prepare me for the first round of damage. So as I know we're getting a little bit closer here, I'm going to start passing out some echoes to my group. You're going to want to clear our thundering before this phase takes place so that we don't have to make any nasty decisions about it. You can see echoes are going out. There's the knockback. We're going to clear the trees with our circle. And then as soon as this damage goes out here, bam, burden embrace. We stasis, follow it up with a dream breath and a spirit bloom. That was a lot of overhealing there, but the purpose of that was to get the stasis saved for that second hit. So once the second hit goes out, we, we heal everybody up with our stasis and easy peasy. So for each of these phases, we basically want to have a cooldown ready for the second part in particular. We'll get our echoes out for the first initial damage when the trees explode. And then when he does his slam, that's where we want to have a cooldown prepared. So I use stasis for the first one. Uh, my plan for the second one is either going to be Emerald Communion or Rewind, depending on how nasty the damage looks. So here's the knockback. I have I'm getting echoes out on as many people as I can. A little bit late there. I can't reach the rogue. But we have a moment here to get everybody topped off gather up the slimes and then when the big slam comes out we're going to be ready to just top people off right away so this boss isn't too bad just be prepared for the incoming damage for evoker the best way to go about it is just have your echoes already pre-spread so you can hit that verdant embrace the moment damage comes out get your life bind buff on everybody and then follow it up with whatever healing combo you want to use. Now this is fortified, so the damage isn't nearly as high as it would be on Tyrannical. On Tyrannical, you're going to want to commit a cooldown for sure every single time. 
Whereas with Fortified, a lot of times Dream Breath and Spirit Bloom will get you through as long as your party's being smart about their defensives. All right, so we're gonna move down the stairs, sneak past the whelps and kill the two elementals. There's not a lot to talk about there. So we're gonna fast forward again to the big rings of trash mobs. So these big rings of trash mobs have some pretty important mechanics to know. From a healer standpoint, there shouldn't be a ton of healing that you need to do here. It's more knowing how to keep these things under control. So we're gonna do a double pull here with the uh, big elemental guy, the smaller elementals, and the seal keeper. So I have the seal keeper targeted here for a very specific reason. As those blue swirlies go out, he's gonna cast icy bindings at some point. This is the most important thing to kick because it will root your whole group. And if that happens at the wrong time, along with like a swirly on the ground phase, you're gonna probably have a few people get one shot. So that's the priority kick. Uh, beyond that, the smaller arcane elementals also do Waking Bane, which will put somebody to sleep. Now, if somebody is asleep again when these swirls come out, they can get one shot by them. So you're going to want to dispel them immediately and do everything you can to kick these casts. So you can see my group doing a nice job here. Uh, none of those important casts are getting out. This big genie elemental guy is getting buffed by Fortified and bolstering into the high heavens, but him by himself uh, isn't really too dangerous. We just got to keep the tank up. So um, main thing here is being on top of your kicks. Uh, the other part we want to watch out for, not so much in this pull, but in some of the pulls coming up is frontals. There's some really nasty frontals here. Now, obviously your tank should be facing these mobs away. So we can see here that there's a couple guys in here that cast piercing shards that does a big, long uh, conal. Uh, and our tank has them facing away. You do still need to be aware though, because you know some affixes are gonna cause your tank to kite. They might turn around and kite towards you. So you do wanna make sure that you have your, uh, you're, you're aware that those mobs are facing the other way. So again, uh, Waking Bane, we wanna make sure we're on top of that. There's no seal keeper here, so this is just Waking Bane. You can see I'm just sitting on this arcane elemental waiting for that particular cast. I feel like as a, an evoker, especially with a 40 second kick, uh, it's better to just kind of sit on those really bad casts, particularly in a pug group where you don't know if people are gonna get them or not, and just like make 100% sure that, um, that those casts are getting kicked. So you can see our tank getting beat up here. Uh, from an evoker standpoint, your best bet is just, as you can see what I'm doing here is just like, constantly echoing and rever reversion on this tank to take advantage of golden hour. I'm not gonna living flame spam him because it's just not gonna do a whole lot. And we'll get a little bit more into tank healing in the next section. So again, here's some of those pierce piercing shard guys. Uh, they're gonna be faced away. As long as they're faced away, we're fine. In this pull, nothing is gonna root you or sleep you. So you just kinda DPS, dodge the swirls, and of course, be aware of the frontals. So this pug group was pretty good. These guys did a really nice job of locking mobs down, which as a healer makes a huge difference. But you also need to be on top of things yourself, right? Like, so as an evoker, you've got tail whip, you've got a knockback, you've got a kick. You wanna try and be in there using them when you can to, to help things out. So again, anytime I see that tank take a, a big dip in damage or in health, I'm gonna throw out an evec uh, echo and cast a reversion on him and just try and get that health up as soon as I can. Again, we get this guy super bolstered. That's kind of hard to avoid, but it's not costing us too badly here. So we're gonna take the book down and hit up the next ring. So our tank's doing a double pull here that has the arcane elementals, a seal keeper, and a couple other mobs in there. Now, unfortunately, our rogue uh, pulls aggro and just basically dies instantly, so that's not good, but we're gonna have to keep working without him. Um, we wanna make sure, again, that we're sitting on top of important casts. So having your uh, elementals targeted, or I'm right, like right now you can see I'm looking for the seal keeper in there, there he is. Uh, I have him targeted just in case someone's gonna miss that icy binding spell because we really don't want that to go off. So as a healer, help yourself out um, and watch for those important casts. Now our tank's getting beat up pretty good here, so we're using Golden Hour to heal him up the best we can. Our rogue is back. 
Once the seal binder is out of the equation, life's quite a bit easier. Um, these guys still can put you to sleep though, so you gotta watch out for that, but at least that's, you can dispel a single target that gets slept. So with the icy binding spell off the table, things are a little bit safer. Now these uh, mobs do beat up the tank pretty good, so you're gonna wanna stay on top of that. From an evoker point of view, you can throw out some time dilations when you think some big damage is gonna come out to kind of negate that or give yourself more time to heal them up. And speaking of tank damage, this next section is a doozy. You really got to help your tank out here and babysit them quite a bit. Uh, so these guards in this next area do a cast called Ice Cutter. And it's a tank buster that hurts quite a bit. Now, fortified bolstering is kind of the nightmare scenario for these guys. And again, uh, our tank does a really nice job in here. You can see that I'm like constantly like, I have time dilation on him right now. It seems like every time I get an echo proc, I'm just like letting it sit on him and I'm waiting. Anytime that health goes down, we cast a reversion on him for golden hour. Um, we just want to be really mindful of our tank's health through here. Don't get lazy and let them drop low. Nobody else should be really taking any damage. There are still seal keepers here though, so we want to keep them targeted as well and just watch out for that icy bindings cast. But you got to sit on top of your tank here, guys. They're going to take a lot of damage. Most tanks are not going to handle it as well as this guy did, so you know, be prepared to uh, to keep your tank alive as much as possible. There's a number of pulls like this, which is basically combinations of these ice cutter mobs and seal keepers that'll root you in packs that do the swirlies on the ground. So by now we should know we want to make sure we kick icy bindings. We got this little mini boss. Now he does a, an ice cutter too. So we're helping our tank out here by just keeping like echo dream breaths up on him, keeping echoed reversions up on him. We don't want his health to drop critically low because this is a situation where your tank can just fall over. So I'm being probably overly cautious about the tank here. I'm definitely forgoing some damage to just make sure that he does not die. Because if the tank goes down here, your group's gonna wipe. And this at this particular point in the dungeon, a wipe is really bad because you're gonna respawn back at the beginning and you're only gonna be able to port to the Laymore room. So the run back is absolutely massive. You don't wanna put yourself through that. So I'm gonna jump forward just a little bit here because the rest of this room is basically just keeping your tank alive through Ice Cutter and making sure that Icy Bindings gets kicked. So we're gonna talk about Azure Blade a little bit here. Now, if you guys follow my stream or you watch me at all, this boss has given me some panic attacks for the early part of the expansion, but I am overcoming my fear of him. Um, from an evoker standpoint, this boss can be a little bit rough because of range issues during the add phase. Um, but in the beginning here, the main thing is just watching out for this orb that he's casting right there, helping kill the adds, helping interrupt the adds, and also being mindful of the fact that this guy has a really nasty cleave and you'd never want to be in front of him. So tanks will tend to move him around the room to help with adds and you don't want to get hit by that but this is the important phase at full energy he's going to do this ad phase now notice i have echoes on my whole party before the phase even starts and then as soon as damage goes out we hit uh we hit stasis verdant embrace dream breath and spirit bloom so we basically store a big fat stasis and that's super critical here because your stasis will still heal people even if they're out of your range when you cast it. So long as the initial heals uh, healed them, then they will benefit from the stasis. So stasis is a great spell to use here. The main thing is have the echoes out when the phase starts. Now, ideally your group will all just kind of follow the tank. That can be a little hit or miss. This group did a so-so a job of that. So we wanna just make sure we have those echoes out. As long as the echo is on your target, even if they have moved out of your range, they're still gonna get healed by your Verdant Embrace or whatever you decide to heal them with. So just get your echoes out in time. Whether you wanna manually do it or temporal anomaly, get the echoes out. Um, so you can see when the next phase starts, he almost doesn't even get a second phase, but he is going to get a second phase here, unfortunately, um, which means we'll have to go through this again. So uh, he's going to start heading to the center at like um, 
six percent we get so we get the echoes out on everybody again now i i know i do make a mistake here but so we put out a zephyr to help mitigate the damage once it gets low again we're gonna um burden embrace we're gonna dream breath and we, we're sitting on a rewind we can use that if we need to when it's ready now i do something pretty dumb here and i think i hover into an orb you know I, I was trying to get in range of someone i think i'm not sure why i chose to hover here but fortunately it was pretty inconsequential because the boss is essentially dead but anyway the big takeaway here is just have your echoes out yeah so right there um hovered into that and luckily he's at two percent he just dies and then we're gonna release and we'll be back with our group. So for Azerblade, just don't panic and use Echoes to your advantage. Let's pop ahead a little bit here again. So at this point I've run back and my group's st already started to pull the next room. Now this is where we kind of make uh, one of the one of the major mistakes of the dungeon was I, I think this tank should have waited until I got down there because by the time I arrived, like it was already hitting the fan here. This room can get very chaotic. It's really not very hard. Uh, it looks more chaotic than it actually is just because the frogs are jumping everywhere. Like somebody there got uh, hit by a stomp. Um, so we had a couple deaths here. It definitely could have been avoided. So the frogs jumping around, you know, is annoying. Shouldn't really kill you. The runes on the ground, again, are annoying. Shouldn't kill you. The real danger here is from the big Draconid guys that do the battle shout, uh, which is a pretty big AoE. Now you can see on uh, Fortified, it's hurting quite a bit. It's taking people down to like at least 50%, 40% or so there. So we're getting our echoes out and we're just using our Verdant Embrace to heal everybody back up. Uh, and really good job by my group of targeting down that Draconid and not the frogs. Because if he got bolstered, we would be in big trouble. That battle shout would st probably start to one shot people. So basically through this area, it's very long. It's very arduous. You're going to need to dodge swirlies. And the main thing from a healer perspective, you're going to want to watch out for is the shouts by the Draconid guys. The people getting hit by the swirlies from the frogs, there's nothing as a healer you can really do about that, but you do need to be prepared for that AOE from those mobs. So there's several rooms of this and it's all pretty much the same stuff. It's just dodging swirlies, watching out for the battle shout and healing people back up again. So let's skip ahead to the next part. So just before the third boss, we're gonna have uh, two of the Draconid guys, which can be quite a bit of a challenge. So you can see I'm starting this pull off right away, throwing out a temporal anomaly, getting my echoes out because I know we're gonna be facing multiple battle shouts and I wanna be ready. So right there, as soon as the damage goes out, Verdant Embrace, Dream Breath, I even commit a stasis to this because, you know, that AOE going off over and over again between the two mobs can be pretty scary. So we pop off our stasis and our group starting to get one of them down. And again, we're putting those echoes right back out again and we're ready for that bestial roar and getting those health bars right back up again. So on a fortified key, this pull can be a little bit hectic. On tyrannical, it shouldn't be too bad. You don't wanna blow everything on this pull because of course you are gonna have the boss afterward, but uh, you do need to respect these guys and try and make sure that you don't uh, let them take down your group with their AOE. You can manage that with defensives as it's going off and also don't stand by the edge because they can shoulder slam you off. So to lash Greywing after the nerf is a lot easier. He used to be incredibly hard to heal. So when you get this frost bomb, you just want to move around the edge and you want to make sure that you're not any blocking any players completely and everybody needs to have some room to get out. Every time that frost bomb goes off, I get an echo on every member of the team that I can and then heal it up immediately. Now for the second phase where he puts the AOE and the circle on the ground, you have a lot of time. You wanna make sure your group's topped off here uh, because they're gonna take a lot of damage and then heal them right back up again. So I did that with the temporal anomaly since everybody's just stacked right up and then follow it right up with a Verdant Embrace. So then we have another um, Frost Circle. We just get our echoes out once again and throw out a Dream Breath, we're good to go. 
If you get the Icy Devastator, you're gonna wanna pop a personal cooldown um, as it will do some pretty heavy single target damage. And this is basically what you're right, rotating through. And the main thing, if you're an evoker, what you wanna take away from this is just having Echo up before the damage comes out is how you're gonna stay ahead of the damage and not fall behind. So you can see Temporal Anomaly, here comes the damage. Instant Verdant Embrace, we get Life Bind out. You know, Call of Ysera talent with our Dream Breath and we're looking good. We can throw Time Dilation on people that we're, we're afraid of getting the Icy Devastator. And when we get in the safe zone, we toss out Temporal Anomaly, get Echoes out. We just wanna make sure everybody's topped off before the ability comes out. On Tyrannical, it will do pretty scary damage. You can also use a Zephyr there to kind of mitigate some of that. You can use a Rewind. Um, there's lots of tools that you have that you can rotate through here. So, but basically this is rinse and repeat, right? It's a very repetitive fight. We get Frost Bomb, we get our Echoes out, and we're, we just manually Echo anybody that doesn't get the Echo from Temporal Anomaly and we just pump them all right back up again. So there's Talash Greywing and then we're gonna head down and get on to Umbral Skull. So this fight can get pretty hectic and the key here really is just to try and move as little as possible. So we wanna get ourselves in a position where we can reach everyone. Typically the tank is gonna put themselves way up on the wall like this guy is. We wanna just have everybody in our range and then we don't wanna make really any unnecessary moves. Uh, when you do need to move, it's great to use an actual like mobility spell because you won't take stacks from that, such as hover. Um, you can also use something like a rescue in a pinch. You can also use deep breath to move yourself around. So if you can avoid walking, that's a really good idea. Now, one mistake I know a lot of people make here is they start dispelling people who have high uh, high stacks of the movement buff. That's really dangerous to do. Your tank will get a magic debuff on them that does a ton of damage, and you're going to want to make sure that you dispel that. Now, right there um, was a little bit of a mistake. So we took that knockback, which does a lot of damage, and we actually got knocked backwards through an orb. Now, luckily, our time of need talent helped us out there. We wouldn't have died anyway, but on a tyrannical key, we very likely would have. So make sure you don't have anything directly behind you, I guess. That's a little bit tough. Um, that's usually a, a place where I like to commit rewind sometimes because it's a big burst of damage and it can be hard because of the distance here to get echoes out on everybody. So as the fight goes on, you're going to want to make sure that you're prioritizing dispelling the tank debuff, not the movement speed. People are pretty much responsible for managing their own movement speed. Now, if you know someone's in like a lethal pinch, you can try it. But here again, you can see dispelling the tank. I have definitely wiped on this boss because I was worried about dispelling people's movement when I should have been dispelling the tank. So keep that in mind, it's pretty important. Now this tank's doing a pretty good job of moving the boss. The, the boss cannot just stay in one corner for the entire fight. The boss needs to be moved as the balls start to overwhelm an area. Uh, it's gonna get pretty hectic here. There's not much to say except stay in range of your tank and manage your own movement speed. Use your movement abilities and you'll get this guy. All right, so that's gonna do it for Azer Vault. If you feel like I left out any good tips, please make sure you share them in the comment section. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video or you wanna see more, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can see way more runs like this if you check out my live stream right here on YouTube, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 9 p.m. Pacific. We're doing keys all night, having lots of fun. Love to see you there. And until next time, guys, happy healing.